Right, so Tory depravity, thy name is Suella Braverman, as once again our god awful Home Secretary has plumbed the depths of what passes for her sense of humanity by choosing to lecture a Holocaust survivor on asylum. Joan Salter was a child survivor of the Holocaust, fleeing persecution and death during World War II, and now aged 83, a lifelong Holocaust educator, for which she has been awarded an MBE, she confronted Braverman over her treatment of refugees, her plans for deportations, and especially her choice of language by describing people today fleeing persecution and war zones as an invasion. She stood up to her MP, Salter is one of Braverman's constituents at a constituency meeting, and this is what she said. I am a child survivor of the Holocaust. In 1943, I was forced to flee my home in Belgium. I went across war-torn Europe and dangerous seas until I was finally able to come to the UK in 1947. Sound familiar so far? Salter continued addressing Braverman. Now, when I hear you using words against refugees like swarm and invasion, I am reminded of the language used to dehumanise and justify the murder of my family and many others. Why do you find the need to use that kind of language? I'll come to Braverman's response in a moment, but honestly, if somebody came up to you and pulled you up on such a thing, how would that make you feel? At the very least, you'd figure it would give you pause to think, examine your choices, maybe place yourself in their shoes and also be quietly horrified by your own actions. Some might be aware that Braverman's own parents came here from Kenya and Mauritius and that her own anti-migrant stance might make her think about that, think about what her parents might have been through. But then her parents came here for economic reasons rather than in a small boat. Across a dangerous body of water is their one and only means of survival, having escaped goodness knows what potential atrocities. Perhaps the difference to a Tory like Braverman, and indeed her parents, her mother ran as a Tory councillor, is economic migrants don't turn up half drowned or worse. Another empty mouth to feed. Perhaps we should stop selling arms abroad if we're going to displace people who might then come here. Just a thought. We are aware of what Joan Salter escaped. We have an appreciation of the horrors of the Holocaust. I won't use the words we know. I've carefully avoided that because, frankly, I don't think we can begin to even fathom it. But the events are well documented. Equally, though, are the horrors of the here and now being documented, too. So who are we to question people trying to escape that now? Choosing to come here as is their right under international law before their case is even heard and being called all manner of dismissive, arrogant names, names with chilling historical precedents. Braverman's response then, try and hold on to your last meal, won't you? She said, I too share a huge amount of concern and sympathy and frustration out of the challenges that we are facing. Personally, I too am. My parents are immigrants. My father was kicked out of Kenya. He found refuge and security and opportunity in the United Kingdom at a time when it was very difficult. And my mother wasn't born in this country. She was recruited as a girl of 18 in Mauritius, and she came to work here as a nurse for some 45 years for our health service. And my parents came here with nothing. They came here with nothing except gratitude and a desire to give themselves to Britain. And they owe everything to this country. And they have taught me a deep and profound love of Britain and British people. Their tolerance, their generosity, their decency, their fair play. And that also means that we mustn't shy away from saying there are problems. And there is a huge problem that we have right now when it comes to migration. The scale of which we have known not before. And I won't apologise for language I use to demonstrate the scale of the problem. I see myself as being honest with British people and honest for British people. I'm not going to shy away from difficult truths, nor am I going to conceal what is the reality that we are all watching. I see myself as your voice in government, your voice around the cabinet table, your voice at the home office, and I listen and hear what the people of Fareham tell me, and I won't hide away from that. So I will not for one minute say that our track record from taking in people from Ukraine, people from Hong Kong, Syria, Afghanistan. I am incredibly proud of what the UK has done in meeting here hundreds of thousands of people who have found security as refugees and friendships in the United Kingdom. And long may that continue. I have benefited from my parents coming here. Millions of people have benefited from a country like the United Kingdom, known around the world. But I will not shy away from saying we have a problem with people exploiting that generosity, breaking our laws and undermining our system. We must accept the enormity of the problem if we've got any chance of solving it. She got applause for that. She got applause for not apologising for her language. She got applause despite not acknowledging at all Joan Salter's question. 
Her comparisons of the language and attitudes used by Braverman to those used against Jewish Holocaust survivors, such as herself, from the Hitler-supporting Daily Mail of the day, to politicians like Nancy Astor and her openly anti-Semitic attitudes, to the likes of today's politicians like David Cameron and his swarms of migrants, to Theresa May burning Windrush boarding cards, proving the right to reside here for many of the Windrush generation, to basically... Anything Boris Johnson might huff and wheeze about on any given day, numerous examples, to the likes of Preeti Patel, whose parents were Ugandan economic migrants, to Rishi Sunak, the prime minister himself, whose parents, again, economic migrants, came from Kenya and Tanzania, to Braverman herself. All of their parents came here by choice. Holocaust survivors of the 1940s, the refugees and asylum seekers of today, all of whom got here by small boat, came here out of desperation. And for those people who bleat today's refugees could go to other safe countries, it's not for us to judge that until their asylum claims are heard. Get in the bin. I'm going to come back, actually, to what Bravman herself said about her parents in that exchange, because the way she told it, it seems like they were fleeing something too. Her mother took up an opportunity to come here as a nurse, sponsored to do so. Great. How about we do that again now then? Because we need nurses desperately, don't we? We still haven't learned to train enough of our own ever since the 1960s. Her father, she claims, was kicked out of Kenya, but he actually came here to work for a housing association. Braverman said so on her own website. We have in the Tory party a list of people of colour gatekeeping the white cliffs of Dover, it seems, from anyone else of colour being able to come in. Braverman heralds the coming of the Ukrainian refugees as proof we are a tolerant country, but it's been ordinary people opening up their own homes that allowed that to happen. Hong Kong got a mention too, and although some from there have sought asylum from the Chinese authorities, many have come here for economic reasons as well. The Afghans have found asylum here only if they got here themselves, since despite promises of 5,000 Afghan refugees to be taken in each year by the UK for four years following the end of the Afghanistan war, we've only achieved that so far because of Afghans getting here themselves, having crossed by small boat. We just gave them leave to remain. Not one single Afghan ally who worked for British forces has been rescued by the UK and brought here following the end of that war. We aren't a tolerant country, not when we use intolerant language, especially when it's our leaders doing it. We aren't doing enough when we spend more money arming those creating more refugees than we do taking responsibility for the mess it makes of people's lives afterwards. The video clip of this exchange is on social media. It's being shared by Freedom From Torture. They're on Twitter as at Free From Torture. So give them a follow. Check that video out, especially since the Home Office is currently trying to force them to take down that footage, claiming it contains coverage of a sensitive area of policy. It was being spoken of in a public arena. Or is this another one of those famous leaky Sue moments? In other words, it's damaging the home office to hell that they have an unapologetic migrant basher who would lecture a Holocaust survivor on such things running their department. Braverman isn't fit to run a tap, let alone anything else. 